To start things off, we want to make sure our body is nice and warm, that the blood is flowing so that we can prevent strain or injuries due to cold. How many times have we found ourselves in cold practice rooms or backstage areas? This exercise only takes a minute and it's perfect to wake yourself up, give yourself a little jolt of energy no matter what temperature it is. So make two gentle fists and we're going to start just by gently hammering out the sides of the body, starting at the hips, the bum and then put a big bend in your knees and make your way down the outsides of each leg, all the way to the ankles. Bend your knees as much as you need. When you get to the bottom, open up your palms and slap up the insides of the legs. We'll do that two more times. So with fists, gently hammering out the sides of the legs and slap, slap, slap up the insides. One more time. And again, bend your knees as much as you need. Great. Take a couple laps around the center of your body, wake up the organs, and then pick one hand. I'll start with the right. I'm going to bring it over to the left side and just start tap, 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 kind of cupping, bringing my attention to my left shoulder, upper back, and then extend the left arm and slap, slap, slap down the outside of the left arm all the way to the back of the hand. Flip it over and cup, cup, cup up the inside. Two more times. And you can spend as much or as little time as you'd like on this. Just waking up the body, energizing the arms now. And then we'll switch sides. Make your way down the outside of the arm and up the inside. Pause and give yourself a little extra love and attention if there's a sticky spot. And one more trip down the outside, up the inside. Bring your fingertips to the center of your chest, waking up the stale air inside your lungs. You can make a noise, uh. You can bring your fingertips under your collarbone. That area can get a bit sticky. And then make little raindrops with your fingers, bring them up the neck, onto the jaw, alongside the nose, to the cheeks, temples, forehead, eyebrows, and then finally up to the top of your scalp, tiny little raindrops pitter-pattering on your head. And when you feel satisfied, bring your arms down by your sides, you can close your eyes, and just notice what's happening inside. Maybe you feel a bit warmer, like there's a buzz going through your body, or awake, alert. And blink your eyes open, and we'll move on from here. Our shoulders are a free-floating ball and socket joint, which makes for a wide range of movement, but also can mean they're susceptible to injury if we don't take care. So let's start to warm them up by bringing our fingertips to our shoulders and just starting to make circles. See if you can think of scooping all of the Nutella out of the jar so that you get the full range of your circle, and then reverse that circle and take it in the opposite direction. And then you can extend your arms out long and start to make circles with your arms. Maybe start small, just checking in with where your shoulders are today. And then you can start to make your circles bigger, continuing to allow for its nice, juicy movement. And just a little bit of that every day will help you to maintain nice, healthy shoulders. So now let's bring a little movement to our spine. If the spine is healthy, the rest of the body, the nervous system will be really happy as well. So the spine has six main directions of movement. It can bend from side to side. It can go forward, backward, and can twist in both directions. So with all of the computering, texting, driving, violining that we do, guess which way the spine moves most of the time? Forward. So we really want to make sure and even it out so that all six directions of movement are slightly more equal. So let's start just by twisting from side to side. You can, well, make sure you're not going to hit anything with your arms. You can tap your arms from side to side. You can give yourself a little tap on the shoulder. 
can swing them out wide in front of you. Really anything. Just start rotating the spine on its axis, warming it up. You can spend as long as you like here. You can even bend down, tap the knee. Really make this your own. Now we'll move from side to side. So take a comfortable stance, feet about hip width distance, and then simply inhale, sweep one arm up really tall, reach towards the ceiling, and bend it over to the opposite direction. You can imagine your hips pressing one way, arm reaching another, and inhale back to center, exhale it down. Inhale the opposite arm up, reach tall, and exhale. You can slide the bottom hand down the thigh, a little deeper stretch along the side, inhale back up to center, exhale down. And you can start to flow with these movements, again pressing the hips in one direction as the fingertips reach to the other, really opening up the side body, creating more space in your ribs, more room for your lungs to breathe. You can do that as quickly or slowly as you like, as many reps on both sides. And then finally we have forward and backward. So let's start by going backward, actually. So for this, you can place your hands in the backs of your imaginary jean pockets. Inhale, shine your chest up to the ceiling, and perhaps press your hips forward any amount. You can also bring your arms to a cactus position. And once again, gaze up, maybe shine your chest, heart up to the ceiling or sky. Just introducing a gentle back bend. And then to come out, bring your fingertips to touch behind your back or make a fist if it's available. Inhale, circle the shoulders out, gaze up. And exhale, bend at the knee, start to hinge at the hips into a forward fold. So you can come down with a flat back or you can round it any time. You can perhaps bring your fist up towards the ceiling any amount. You can also let it go whenever it's comfortable. And just enjoy being upside down for a few minutes. You can maybe shake your head yes, shake it no. You can bring your fist a bit higher up, getting into the shoulder blades. And then release your fist if you haven't already. Spend a few more moments here upside down, just kind of relaxing, wiggling it out. And then very slowly inhale and start to stack each bone of your spine, one on top of the other. When you get to the top, maybe roll out the shoulders. And there you have it, the spine in six directions. One of my favorite stretches for the upper back, the neck, the shoulders, the arms, the wrists, so many things are eagle arms. So to get into an eagle wrap, bring your arms out long to the side and then swing the right elbow underneath the left. Cross again at the forearms and grab anything you can grab. Grab for the wrist perhaps or the thumb. If you want, you can interlace all 10 fingers. I personally like to keep the thumbs interlaced and bring the other eight fingers straight. And then once you have your ego arms, you can sort of bounce. You'll see, you'll already start to feel it. And then you can play with taking your elbows up. Bringing your elbows down. Be sure to move mindfully so that you're careful. Take your chin up to the ceiling. Take your chin down to your chest, and then maybe just hold and slowly unwind. Check in, see how that felt, and then let's try the other side. So we'll swing the left elbow underneath the right, cross again at the forearms, and grab again for whatever you can grab, the thumb, the wrist, maybe interlacing all 10 fingers. Each side is different, so be sure to just allow the space that each side needs. Say a nice hello, maybe bounce your elbows down, slowly take your chin up, and slowly bring your chin down. And then maybe take a moment to just pause and feel anything that's opening. Perhaps you can release tension with your breath, and when you're ready, unwind slowly, bring your arms down to your sides, and just notice. Now that we've worked the upper body, let's think about the lower body a little bit. If we're able, when we're playing, to transfer some of the energy, the excitement from perhaps our shoulders, upper back, neck, arms, down lower, we're going to have a more stable center of gravity when we play. We'll be able to balance across both feet better, engage our lower half, which will actually enable us to be much freer in our upper half. So how can we work on that? If you have a yoga block, grab it. If you don't have a yoga block, don't worry. You can use a rolled up towel, the biggest towel you can find. You can kind of make a 
little roll out of it, whatever works for you. You can also use a book, anything. You can also just imagine that you have something in between your legs. So glance down at your feet. We want them to be parallel, so like train tracks, and really rooted into the ground. So imagine that you're distributing your weight evenly all across the bottom of your foot. Now bend your knees slightly, and then imagine that you're straightening them, but something is preventing you from doing that. See how that engages your upper thighs a little bit? You can also really activate them by squeezing the block or the towel that you have in between your legs. See how that really turns on your lower half. This is the sensation that we want, not only when we're practicing yoga or even just standing, honestly, but definitely when we're playing. This really activates the lower half and alleviates some of the burden from our upper half. So really press your feet into the ground, activate the thighs, and perhaps you can just stand here in a mountain pose, imagining that your crown of the head is floating up towards the ceiling. You can bring your arms into a playing position and just see how it feels to be engaged from the waist down. See whether that frees up the upper half. Or if you want to get really fancy, you can come into a chair pose. So you can bring your arms parallel in front of you. Reach them out in front of you. Inhale to grow taller and exhale, begin to sit into an imaginary chair behind you. Notice whether you're compressing in the lower back, tilt the tailbone down towards the ground. You can continue reaching out in front of you or perhaps even bring your arms up to a diagonal. And notice you're really turning on your lower half. So squeeze your block or towel together, sit back even further, notice your thighs activating and exhale to come up, straighten out. So notice how much engagement that required. See if you can bring a little bit of that into your instrumental practice. We're gonna get a little bit cozier now. So move your prop to the side and we're just going to gently transition down onto all fours for some wrist work. One of my favorite ways to roll out my wrist is here in an all fours position. So come down to a tabletop position to stack your hips on top of your knees, shoulders can be on top of your wrist, or you can pull your body a bit back to decrease some of the weight going down into your wrists. So push the ground away and slowly just start to make circles, rotating around your wrists. And then you can reverse those circles. And then I like to extend the stretch to go up my forearms into my biceps coming up my shoulders so you can place your fingertips back toward your legs and you can start to slowly bring your hips back toward your heels and you'll feel it you'll know when to stop you'll know what feels good and you can just hold it there and then the last thing I like to do is to face my fingertips outward bring my wrist in toward each other and then make circles here And of course, reverse your circles, always. It's so nice. So you can play with that, be gentle, and just aware as you start to make your circles. While we're down here on all fours, let's enjoy a nice stretch behind the shoulder blade. So let's start with the left arm, sweep it up, reach tall towards the ceiling, and then let's thread it through the space between our opposite arm and leg. Two more times. Inhale, reach taller, feel an opening in the chest. Exhale, thread it through, hover. One more time, inhale, reach taller, twist open. Exhale, thread the left arm through. This time you can come to rest. Bring the back of the hand towards the ground. You can rest your left cheek onto the ground and hopefully feel an opening up behind the left shoulder blade. You can walk your right fingertips forward if you like, or you can keep supporting your hand down by your cheek. Breathe into any sensation you might feel along the left shoulder blade. This is a nice twist, kind of a passive posture. Take as many breaths as you like here. And then to come out, press into your right hand. Slide your left hand up one more time, reach tall, and exhale, place it down. Let's do the other side. So right hand sweeps up tall, reach, feel the chest open. Exhale, thread it through, hover twice more. Inhale, reach tall, open. 
Exhale, thread the needle. One more time. Inhale, reach tall. And exhale, thread your arm through. This time, you can come to rest. Feel a stretch along your right shoulder blade. You can bring your cheek down to the ground. And just breathe here into this posture. You can press the back of your right hand into the ground for an added bit of intensity. Or just relax. Couple breaths here. You can bring your left fingertips forward. And then to come out, press into your left hand. Sweep the right arm up, reach tall. And exhale back to your tabletop. Nice work. We'll come to a seated position for our last few postures together. Twists are a great way to create suppleness and freedom in the spine. So one way we can do a seated twist is by coming to a cross leg seat, growing tall through your spine, coming out of the crown of your head, and then just bringing the right hand to the left knee, taking the left hand behind you on the fingertips and starting to slowly look over that left shoulder. And think of continuing to grow out of your seat to make space in your spine, and then to use that space to rotate coming into your twist. And always exit your twist slowly and mindfully so as not to hurt yourself. And then we'll take the other side. So the left hand to the right knee, right hand to the fingertips behind you, helping to grow the spine, elongate out of your seat, and then starting to look over your right shoulder, coming into your twist. You can hold it, remember to breathe while you're in your twist and coming in and out of the twist. And then if a cross-legged seat is not comfortable, you can extend your legs long. Simply bend one knee at a time. So I'll start with my left knee. Step that left foot over the right leg. Hug that knee in with the right arm. And then start to elongate again through your spine, bringing that left hand behind you onto fingertips, looking over the left shoulder. And then if you would like to, you can even start to counterbalance yourself and provide maybe even more depth through your twists by bringing that right elbow on the outside of the left knee. And then again, we'll do the other side. So bring that right foot up, step it over the left leg. You can start by hugging that right knee in, elongate, take your fingertips down behind you, and then maybe you want to explore taking that left elbow on the outside of the right knee to make even more space for a really nice juicy twist. Now that we've warmed up, stretched out, and twisted the body, we're simply going to spend a few moments here seated, breathing together. So you can grab your block again, or a cushion, pillow, even a chair, find a comfortable seat, find it nice to elevate my hips, find a little more length in the spine, place your hands wherever it's comfortable, and we're going to take a few rounds of breath, inhaling normally, perhaps through the nose, and exhaling through the mouth, narrowing our lips into a beak-like shape. Or it's like we're blowing through an imaginary straw. So by constricting the airflow on the way out, we lengthen the exhales, which can be really calming, grounding. We drop into our parasympathetic nervous system, which really just chills us out. So this can be really useful before you practice and especially before you walk on stage to perform. So find a comfortable seat, grow taller through the crown of the head, and let's inhale together through the nose, exhaling through that imaginary straw. See how much longer the exhale was than the inhale. Let's do it again. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through our beak-like mouth. One more time together. Inhale. Exhale through a straw or beak. So you can do this for as many rounds as you need to drop into that parasympathetic nervous system, feel grounded, calm. If you wanna give yourself an added sense of being rooted, you can make peace signs with your fingers and bring them to rest on your thighs or the ground. This makes us drop into our space even further, really calms us down, makes us feel centered. So you can do this for as long as you need before you practice, before you perform. And then over to Melissa for a few final stretches before it is practice time.
Since we all use our hands a whole lot, it's important that we keep them stretched and strengthened so they can stay happy and healthy. So these are some of my favorite go-to hand and wrist stretches. I'd like to start by interlacing all 10 fingers and just rotating them to create the figure eight, an imaginary figure eight. And then reversing that figure eight, which even gives a little bit of brain yoga. And then next I like to isolate the wrist. So I'll make a bracelet with the left hand around my right wrist and slowly start to make circles there with the right wrist. You might have some music making in the joints. It's okay, just give them some nice love and lubrication. And then switch sides. So I'll do the left side now, starting to make circles. And remember when you make your circles to reverse your circles and go the opposite direction. And then finally, I like to stretch out each of my fingers. So I'll extend my right arm long, take my left arm underneath, and then slowly start to stretch my thumb toward my body, bringing it back toward my body. And really every day feels different. I'll move down the line of my finger. So next the index, moving to the middle finger, the ring finger, finally the pinky, and then I'll do the entire hand, palm to palm, bringing those fingers back toward my body again. You'll feel the stretch and then flipping my palm and doing the back of the hand. And of course, we'll do the other hand. So crossing that right arm underneath the left, starting to stretch the thumb back toward your body, and then moving down the line and doing each finger individually. And since each day will feel different, just be sure you approach it with a nice sense of curiosity instead of any sort of expectation. And then always going slowly and moving mindfully so that nothing gets hurt and in the end you feel better.